Hello, my name is Trent Aidy and I'm a Technical Solution Specialist for IBM. Today we'll be talking about Dynamic Query Mode for Cognos Analytics. A few things to consider about Dynamic Query Mode. The benefits. This is a 64-bit Java-based query service that is highly scalable. It's optimized for in-memory processing. There's enhanced query performance and usability. Data caching. Now with this data caching, there's also security awareness. So we're ensuring that only the data that you want is getting to the users that you want. We're able to reuse content with that data cache. If we hit a database connection and another user needs to use the same content, we are able to reuse that based on that data cache instead of hitting the database again. Some requirements to consider. These are JDBC connections, so those have to be configured. The data has to be dimensionally modeled or from an OLAP data source. Caching is not ideal for real-time data, but it can be turned off in circumstances where needed. There are stricter query rules, no many-to-many -many relationships, and there are higher memory requirements for all the caching that takes place. The first place I would go is to the IBM Knowledge Center. Here you'll find all the documentation for IBM Cognos and Dynamic Query Mode. Here you'll find information on why and how to use Dynamic Query Mode and step-by-step -step processes to accomplish it. From there I would go to your Cognos installation folder on the Web Apps P2P WebEnf Lib folder. And here you're going to deposit both JDBC jar files for DB2 connection. The DB2 JCC license CU and the DB2 JCC4 jar files. These are required. I've also included here the web link for the Knowledge Center and the folder location. From here we'll go to the Cognos configuration location and restart our Cognos services. The query services are enabled, which is how you want it for JDBC connections and DQM. From here we'll go to IBM Administration, the Configuration tab, and create a new data source, which we'll name DB2. We're going to use an IBM DB2 connection and configure JDBC connection. We'll name our database name. our connect string and have no authentication. Now in the JDBC connect string information we'll include our server name, port number, and database name and then test our connection from there. Assuming all the connections are good and successful we'll move to the next step. Within Framework Manager there are two methods of making sure that JDBC connections are enabled by creating a new project and selecting Use Dynamic Query Mode. Here you'll have Dynamic Query Mode enabled. The second method is using an existing project. Open the existing project. Make sure all your data sources are JDBC connections. Under Packages, publish your package and make sure you use Dynamic Query Mode and publish your, information. And publish your new package. I hope this information has been helpful for you. I hope you can gain the benefits of Dynamic Query Mode. Please look for other videos I've created. Thank you very much.